In this video, we will be covering the subject of data security. We will be taking an in-depth look at the file security Microsoft offers on Windows 10 and 11, and in particular, we will be focusing on how to keep your PC's files away from prying eyes by using the encrypting file system and BitLocker. Encrypting file system and BitLocker work very differently, so this will not be a direct comparison between the two systems. Instead, I will be discussing each in detail, including the pros and cons of each system, and which one may be best suited to your needs. I will also cover the setup and configuration of both systems, how to encrypt and decrypt files, and encryption key management and recovery. While encrypting file system and BitLocker work on Windows versions prior to Windows 10, for brevity, I will only be covering their use on Windows 10 and Windows 11 in this video. So, let's get to it. There's whole tech stuff. As I mentioned earlier, I will be covering encrypting file system and BitLocker separately, but you may find this system comparison chart useful. This way, you can jump to the relevant chapter in this video if this helps you to decide. A full list of supported operating systems can be found in this video's description. The Windows Encrypting File System is a Windows feature that allows users to encrypt individual files or folders on an NTFS formatted drive. It provides an extra layer of security by making the contents of a file or folder unreadable to unauthorized users or systems, even if they gain physical access to the storage device. This feature is particularly useful for protecting sensitive information on laptops or other devices that might be vulnerable to theft or unauthorized access. In order to use encrypting file system, you will need to be using a password with your user account. A strong, difficult-to-crack password is highly recommended. How it works If you are interested in how encrypting file system works at a technical level, then this section is for you. If you just want to use it without taking a look under the hood, this video uses chapter titles, so feel free to skip ahead. If you are still watching at this point, then welcome, fellow geek. Here's how encryption and decryption works. Encrypting a file. When a user chooses to encrypt a file or folder, encrypting file system generates a unique file encryption key, FEK, which is then used to encrypt the file's contents with a symmetric encryption algorithm called DESX. This FEK is then encrypted with the user's public key, asymmetric encryption, and stored inside the file's header. The user's public key is stored on the user's computer. Decrypting a file. When the user or an authorized account tries to access the encrypted file, Windows automatically decrypts the FEK using the user's public key, which is securely stored in the user's profile. The FEK is then used to decrypt the file's contents on the fly, allowing the user to access the file as if it were not encrypted. This process is transparent to the user, meaning they do not need to manually decrypt or re-encrypt files. Encrypting file system also allows for multiple users to access the same encrypted file by encrypting the FEK with each user's public key, ensuring that only authorized users can decrypt and access the data. Want to know more? There are links in this video's description to excellent articles which explain the concepts we have just covered in more detail. The key advantages to using an encrypting file system Strong data security. Encrypting file system provides robust encryption that protects sensitive files from unauthorized access, even if the physical device is compromised or stolen. User-friendly integration. Encrypting file system is built into Windows and can be easily applied to individual files or folders with just a few clicks, making it accessible for users without requiring additional software. Transparent operation. Once files are encrypted, Encrypting file system handles encryption and decryption automatically in the background, allowing users to access their files normally without any additional steps. Protection on NTFS volumes. Encrypting file system is specifically designed for NTFS formatted drives, ensuring that data stored on these drives is well protected within the Windows environment. Support for multiple users. Encrypting file system allows multiple users to access encrypted files, provided they are authorized and have the necessary encryption keys, making it useful in collaborative environments.
prevents unauthorized data sharing. Encrypted files cannot be easily shared or accessed by others without proper authorization, reducing the risk of data breaches through file sharing or transfer. Security on laptops and mobile devices. Encrypting file system is particularly beneficial for securing data on laptops and portable devices that are more susceptible to theft or loss, providing peace of mind for mobile users. Some disadvantages to using encrypting file system. Performance impact. Encrypting and decrypting files can cause a slight performance slowdown, especially with large files or on older hardware. Key management complexity. If the encryption keys are lost or corrupted, the encrypted files may become permanently inaccessible, making key management crucial and potentially complex. Limited recovery options. Without proper backup of the encryption certificates or keys, data recovery can be extremely challenging if access is lost. Not suitable for sharing. Encrypting file system is designed for individual file protection making it difficult to securely share encrypted files with other users without exporting and managing certificates. NTFS dependent. Encrypting file system can only be used on NTFS formatted drives, limiting its applicability in environments using different file systems. Potential compatibility issues. Encrypting file system is a Windows specific feature, so encrypted files may not be accessible or usable on non-Windows operating systems without additional software. Not foolproof against advanced attacks. While encrypting file system offers good protection, it may not be sufficient against advanced threats, especially if the system itself is compromised, for example, through malware. Using encrypting file system. How to encrypt a file or folder. Prior to deciding whether to encrypt a single file or a folder, it is important to note that from a security viewpoint, it is safer to encrypt the entire folder rather than one file, as under certain circumstances, the file's data may reside on the media unencrypted. Here's why. When a file is initially encrypted using an encrypting file system, the file is encrypted in place. However, when modifying a file which has already been encrypted, some programs or applications may create an unencrypted temporary file during the editing process. While the existence of such a temporary file may be short-lived, it can pose a risk to sensitive information. This issue can be mitigated by encrypting the file's folder rather than the file itself. This way, any temporarily created files will also be encrypted. If this issue is not significant to you, then encrypting the file may be your chosen option. Encrypting a file. This section explains how to encrypt a file. There are a few differences between encrypting a file and a folder, so these differences will be highlighted as we go. Using Windows File Explorer or any alternative which you may have installed, right-click on the file you wish to encrypt, then select the Properties menu item. Next, click the Advanced button. Now select the Encrypt Contents to Secure Data checkbox, then click the OK button. Click the OK button. If you encrypted a file, you will see the window on the left displayed. If you have encrypted a folder, you will see the window on the right displayed. So, for file encryption, you would select the Encrypt File Only option, then click OK. For the Folder Encryption option, select which of the two options you prefer, then click OK. Your file or folder has now been encrypted. If you encrypted the folder, then all the files within that folder and subfolders if you selected that option are now encrypted. While encrypted folders look no different, an encrypted file will have a gold padlock on the top right of its icon, as you can see here. After the encryption has completed, you will see a pop-up window reminding you to back up your encryption key. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of performing this backup immediately. Here are a few of the reasons why. If the encryption key is lost due to system corruption, operating system reinstallation, or hardware failure, the encrypted files become inaccessible, potentially leading to permanent data loss. A backup ensures you can recover the key and regain access to your files. If an administrator resets or changes your password, you will need to restore your encryption key. If you move files to another computer or transfer your user profile to a new system, the encryption key will need to be available. Backing up your encryption key. To back up your encryption key, we will be using the Certificate Export Wizard. 
The quickest way to run the wizard is to click on the icon shown here in the system tray. However, the icon may not be present, but don't worry, I will cover that shortly. For now, we will assume that the icon is not there, and we will run the wizard using another method. To run the wizard, simply hold down the Windows key on your keyboard while simultaneously pressing the R key. This will bring up the Run dialog window. Then, type the text shown on the screen, followed by clicking OK. This will bring up the Certificate Manager. Now, double-click Personal, then Certificates, followed by right-clicking on your username. Then, select All Tasks, followed by Export. This brings you to the Certificate Export Wizard. Going back to our potentially missing icon mentioned earlier, if it had existed and you had clicked on it, this is the window you would have seen. From this point on, the procedure is identical. Now, click the Next button. On this window, select Yes, export the private key, then click Next. Now we need to select the following options. PFX, include all certificates in the certification path if possible, and enable certificate privacy options. Then click Next. In this window, we need to provide a strong password. In this example, I have used a randomly generated password with a length of 34 characters. Please make sure you save your password in a safe place, such as a password manager, as you may need it in order to access your key at a later date. Click Next. On this window, we need to select a file name for the key's backup file. By default, the directory used is one on your primary drive, typically the C drive. Of course, this would be of little use if that folder was encrypted. In this example, I have specified a USB drive which has a thumb drive attached. I recommend making a second copy of the file on a different drive to act as a backup. After entering the file name details, click Next. This window allows you to confirm the details you have entered. Clicking the Finish key will cause your backup file to be written to your specified location. Now would be a good time to make that backup copy. Now that you have encrypted your files and made a backup copy of your encryption key, here are a few key points to be aware of. If you encrypt a compressed file or folder, the file or folder will no longer be compressed. If you compress an encrypting file system, encrypted file or folder, the file or folder will no longer remain encrypted. Encrypted files can be copied to other locations. If you attempt to copy an encrypted file or folder to a location that does not support encryption, a warning message will appear. As mentioned earlier in this video, there is no need to decrypt a file, as this is done automatically when the file is accessed. What is BitLocker? BitLocker is a Windows security feature that provides encryption for entire volumes, addressing the threats of data theft or exposure from lost, stolen, or incorrectly discarded devices. BitLocker differs from the encrypting file system in that the encrypting file system only encrypts individual files or folders, not the entire volume. The Trusted Platform Module, TPM BitLocker provides maximum protection when used with a trusted platform module, TPM chip, which is a common hardware component installed on most modern Windows PCs. The TPM works with BitLocker to ensure that a device hasn't been tampered with while the system is offline. How to detect if your PC has a TPM chip? If you're not sure if your PC has a TPM chip, then this section will explain how to check. If you know that your PC does have a TPM chip of version 1.2 or greater, then you can skip this section. To check for a TPM chip, hold down the Windows key on your keyboard while simultaneously pressing the R key. This will bring up the Run dialog window. Type TPM period MSC and click OK. This displays the TPM management window. Here, we can see that there is a TPM chip and that it is ready to use. We can also see that the TPM version is 2.0. The minimum version requirement for BitLocker is version 1.2. Don't worry if your PC doesn't meet this requirement as you can still use BitLocker as I will cover later. So in this example, you are good to go. If no TPM chip is detected, you will see this window. Of course, it may just be that it is not activated in your PC's BIOS, which I will cover next. If no TPM chip is detected, it may be worth checking your PC's BIOS. 
To do this, hold down the Windows key on your keyboard while simultaneously pressing the X key. Select Shutdown or Sign Out and click on the Restart option while holding down the Shift key. After a few seconds, you will see the Options screen. Select the Troubleshoot option. Now, select the Advanced Options. Click on the UEFI Firmware Setting option. Now, click on the Restart button. This will restart your PC and take you into the BIOS settings. Prior to clicking on Restart, make sure that you have saved all of your work in other applications. What you see on the BIOS screen will depend on the make and model of your computer. The screen I am using here is from one of my Dell PCs. A typical selection would be security then TPM. Here we can see that a TPM exists in the system and that it is turned on. If it isn't turned on in your system, just click on the checkbox highlighted here. Of course, it may be different in your system, but the principle will be the same. Now you can boot your PC into Windows. If you do not see the TPM option, then it is likely that your PC is not equipped with a TPM chip, but all is not lost, as you may still be able to use BitLocker, which I will cover next. Using BitLocker on a PC without a TPM chip. In order to use BitLocker on a PC without a TPM chip, your PC will need to be configured to do so, which I will cover in a moment. Please bear in mind that this video is aimed at Windows 10 and 11 users, although some earlier operating systems may also support using BitLocker without a TPM chip. As a side note, if you attempt to use BitLocker without a compatible TPM chip installed, you will see this window. This is what we are going to cover now. At this point, we need to make a change in your PC's group policy using the group policy editor. You will need administrative privileges on your login account to do this. To run the group policy editor, hold down the Windows key on your keyboard while simultaneously pressing the R key. This will bring up the Run dialog window. Then, type the text shown on the screen, followed by clicking OK. This will bring up the group policy editor window. Here, we need to select Computer Configuration, Administrative Templates, Windows Components, BitLocker Drive Encryption, Operating System Drives, and double-click on Require Additional Authentication at Startup. That will bring up this window. For this window, we just need to select Enabled, ensure that the checkbox headed Allow BitLocker without a compatible TPM is checked, then click OK. Now we need to commit the group policy changes we have just made. To do this, hold down the Windows key on your keyboard while simultaneously pressing the R key. This will bring up the Run dialog window. Then, type CMD, followed by clicking OK. This will bring up a command prompt window. In this window, we need to type the text shown on the screen, followed by the Enter key. The following will now be displayed. After a few seconds, the display will change to this. This indicates that your group policy was successfully updated. Now, type exit and press the enter key. Now, you are ready to encrypt your hard disk. Encryption with and without a TPM chip. In the rest of this video, I will be talking about BitLocker encryption both with and without a TPM chip. As this can be a little confusing, I have separated the instructions into sections. Encryption with a TPM chip and encryption without a TPM chip. In this section, I will be covering encryption with a TPM chip. So if your PC does not have a compatible TPM chip, you can use this video's chapters to skip to the next section which will cover this. You may not see all of the windows shown in this section, as some may depend on your PC's configuration, so don't worry if your screen sometimes looks different. To select the BitLocker option, press the Windows key on your keyboard and type BitLocker. This will display the Manage BitLocker option. Click on this option. Now, we see the BitLocker Drive Encryption window. To turn on BitLocker, click on the Turn on BitLocker link. This will cause this window to be displayed for a few seconds. Once Windows has determined that your PC is correctly configured, this window will be displayed. Now, click Next. If you see this window, click Next. If the last window was displayed, this is the next window you will see. This window shows you the actions BitLocker will take next. The preparation will be next, and the encryption will take place after your PC is restarted. Click Next. Here, you are prompted to save your recovery key. A BitLocker recovery key is needed when BitLocker can't automatically unlock an encrypted drive in Windows. This key, which is a 48-digit number, is used to regain access to the drive, 
so it is important that a backup be made of it. For more information on this, there is a link in this video's description. In this example, I will select Save to a file. Of course, it can't hurt to have a hard copy as a backup, so you may wish to print the recovery key as well. Click the Save to a file link. You are now prompted to enter a location and file name for your key. Of course, Windows will not allow you to save the key to the disk which is to be encrypted. Having entered these details, click Save. As you can see, the next button on this window is now active, so let's click it. Now, you will need to select how much of the drive you wish to encrypt. As this PC has been in use for a while, I will select the entire drive option. After making your selection, click Next. Have a read of this screen and choose the option best suited to your needs. I have selected the new encryption mode. Now click Next. Check the Run BitLocker System checkbox, then click Continue. Now, you are ready to let BitLocker encrypt your drive. All that is required is for you to restart your PC. Prior to clicking on Restart Required, make sure that you have saved all of your work and other applications. Now click the Restart Required link in order to restart your PC. If you check the BitLocker window after your PC has rebooted, you will be greeted with this. As you can see, your PC's drive is now being encrypted. Coming up next is using BitLocker without a TPM chip. If you are interested in how to monitor your drive's encryption progress, check out the chapter titled Monitoring BitLocker Encryption Progress. I spend a lot of time coming up with these names, you know. Encryption without a TPM chip. You may not see all of the windows shown in this section, as some may depend on your PC's configuration, so don't worry if your screen sometimes looks different. To select the BitLocker option, press the Windows key on your keyboard, then type BitLocker. This will display the Manage BitLocker option. Click on this option. Now, we see the BitLocker Drive encryption window. To turn on BitLocker, click on the Turn on BitLocker link. This will cause this window to be displayed for a few seconds. Once Windows has determined that your PC is correctly configured, this window will be displaying. Here, we need to select the method we wish to use in order to keep your data secure. If we were using a TPM chip, this information would be stored there, but as we aren't, we need to provide an alternate destination to store this information. For this example, I have chosen to use a password. Click on the Enter a Password link. Now enter and re-enter a long secure password. Once you have done this, click Next. You will be prompted for this password every time you boot your PC. Please be sure to keep this password safe. I recommend using a password manager and keeping a printed version in a safe place. Extra points for not writing your password on a post-it and sticking it to your monitor. Yep, people do that. Here, you are prompted to save your recovery key. A BitLocker recovery key is needed when BitLocker can't automatically unlock an encrypted drive in Windows. This key, which is a 48-digit number, is used to regain access to the drive, so it is important that a backup be made of it. For more information on this, there is a link in this video's description. In this example, I will select Save to a file. Of course, it can't hurt to have a hard copy as a backup, so you may wish to print the recovery key as well. Click the Save to a file link. You are now prompted to enter a location and file name for your key. Of course, Windows will not allow you to save the key to the disk which is to be encrypted. Having entered these details, click Save. As you can see, the next button on this window is now active, so let's click it. Now, you will need to select how much of the drive you wish to encrypt. As this PC has been in use for a while, I will select the entire drive option. After making your selection, click Next. Have a read of this screen and choose the option best suited to your needs. I have selected the new encryption mode. Now click Next. Check the Run BitLocker System checkbox, then click Continue. Now, you are ready to let BitLocker encrypt your drive. All that is required is for you to restart your PC. Prior to clicking on Restart Required, make sure that you have saved all of your work and other applications. Now click the Restart Required link in order to restart your PC. If you check the BitLocker window after your PC is rebooted, you will be greeted with this. As you can see, your PC's drive is now being encrypted. Monitoring BitLocker Encryption Progress To monitor the progress of your drive encryption, press the Windows button on your keyboard, then type CMD. This will bring up the Command Prompt feature. 
Click on Run as Administrator. This is important as administrative privileges are required in order to run the following command. In the command prompt window, type the text shown on the screen, then press Enter. In this example, I will be checking Drive C. You will now see a status report relating to your drive's encryption progress. This screen indicates that the process is 68.8% complete and that the protection is currently off. Once the drive is fully encrypted, running the command again will produce this report. This shows that the process is complete and that the protection is on. Congratulations, your drive is now encrypted. You can now exit the command prompt by typing exit and pressing the enter key. If you would like to create a one-click administrative command prompt, check out my video short. A link to it can be found in this video's description. In this video, we have covered the encrypting file system and BitLocker, their pros and cons, and how to use them. Of course, there are free, third-party solutions available if neither of the options I have covered in this video appeal to you. A quick Google search will reveal plenty of available options. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe as it will really help the channel to grow, and please do feel free to leave a comment as I take the time to read all posted comments.